This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Because of phase and Euler's formula. These two things are pretty much the why and how electrical engineers use imaginary numbers in circuit analysis. With just resistors, we don't need imaginary numbers because the ratio of voltage and current for a resistor is always constant. Thus, they are in phase and the math is much easier. Even if the input is not sinusoidal, voltage and current will still move together. With a capacitor, this is not the case. If you have a sinusoidal input and plot voltage versus current across a capacitor, you'll find they are out of phase by 90 degrees. And that's found with the capacitor equation. So if I set C to 1, just for simplicity, and the voltage across the capacitor is sine t, then current is cosine t, which can also be written as sine of t plus 90 degrees. So when it comes to sinusoidal inputs, capacitors cause this shift, along with likely an amplitude change, but the shift is what we care about, because the math becomes more difficult when you have sinusoids with different phases, even just adding. You can't just combine like terms here. You can use a trig identity or something cooler, which is Euler's formula and imaginary numbers. Now, the first reason this formula is amazing is that it allows us to write any complex number in exponential form. I'm not gonna go into the visuals of this, but as a numerical example, if you take the complex number one plus one i, you can write that as root two cosine of 45 degrees plus i times root two sine of 45 degrees. And this can be rewritten in exponential form according to Euler's formula. And all that matters here is the fact that there's always a way to write a complex number in this format, which can then be rewritten in exponential form. Even if that complex number looks like this, it can still be simplified to some a plus bi then with just some basic trig, we find, in this case, the real component 1 equals root 3.25 cosine of 56.3 degrees, while the imaginary component equals root 3.25 sine of 56.3 degrees. And now that we have the correct format, same coefficient and same argument, we can write this in exponential form. This is useful because when given a sinusoid, there's no real constant you can multiply it by to change the phase. A here only changes the amplitude. But if you have e to the i t, which can be written out with sinusoids, and then multiply it by some complex constant, let's say 2 e to the i times 30 degrees, which is just this, however, I'm gonna keep it in exponential form, because all we have to do is use simple rules of exponents to get our answer. Then from Euler's formula, we can write it out as such. And I know there are two sinusoids here, but just look at the individual components. Like the real part started out as cosine t. After multiplying by just a complex number, the real part of the output is still just a cosine function, but with a different amplitude and phase, which is exactly what we observe with voltage versus current in a capacitor or inductor. So there's a peek at how useful complex numbers are. They help when amplitude and phase shifts occur. Now, another thing we can do with Euler's formula is essentially solve problems that involve sinusoids by replacing them with this exponential, going through with the math, then just looking at the real component of the output. Not a great explanation, but here's what I mean. You can find the double angle formula for cosine as well as many other trig identities by just using Euler's formula. The first step is to just plug two theta into the argument, because now the real part of this is what we're trying to find a formula for. And now you can use a simple rule of exponents to rewrite the left side as e to the i theta all squared, which is just Euler's formula squared. If we FOIL this out using the fact that i squared is negative one, we'll get this here, which again is equal to what we started with, e to the i times two theta. So setting the real parts equal to one another, we get cosine of two theta equals cosine squared minus sine squared, 
which hey is the double angle formula for cosine. But that's not all, as the double angle formula for sine can be found by setting the imaginary components equal to one another. So that's the idea. When given a problem with cosine of something or sine, sometimes we can instead make it more complicated by adding i sine of that thing and setting it equal to our exponential. Because now we can use properties of exponents to simplify this. And at the end, the individual components, in a way, reveal our answer. By the way, that's also how you can solve this problem I put on the screen earlier. Just put them in exponential form, simplify, then look at the real component. So now let's apply this to the capacitor equation. And because I is used for current, to avoid confusion from here on, the imaginary unit will be represented with a J instead of I, which is actually what electrical engineers do. Now, if the input is a generic sinusoid, some a cosine of omega t plus theta, well, again, we can find current by just taking a derivative. So we get current is this here. But let's instead say voltage is a e to the j times omega t plus theta, which is weird and makes no sense physically, but the real part of the exponential is our actual voltage. So at the end, we'll just see what the real component looks like. Okay, so we'll go through with the derivative, and j, root negative 1, is just a constant, by the way. So we get current equals this here. But a e to the j omega t plus theta is just our voltage. So we can actually say current equals j omega c times v. And voltage, as we've defined it, is this here, with the real and imaginary components. So multiplying that by j omega c we get this. And if we just look at the real component, we see it's the same as what we got before when we simply took a derivative of a cosine function. Now, Euler's formula did not make any of this any easier, but notice how by using Euler's formula, we turned an equation that involves a derivative into one that doesn't. That's the key detail that makes this all useful for real circuits. Because now we can rearrange this equation and make a ratio of voltage and current. This is the impedance of a capacitor, which is kind of like resistance. The 1 over omega c part is the ratio in amplitude, A versus omega c A. But the J, the imaginary unit, tells us there will also be a phase shift of 90 degrees, cosine versus negative sine. So now let's put it all together with a circuit that has a resistor, a capacitor, and a sinusoidal input. This is the actual differential equation that would be used to solve for the voltage across the capacitor. But if the input is sinusoidal, then the capacitor voltage will be as well. So we know the solution is going to have the form A cosine of omega t plus theta. But instead of plugging that in for V sub c and solving, which would not be fun, we can instead say V sub C is this exponential. Because as we just saw, the time derivative of this is J omega times itself, VC. So plugging that in for dV dt, the differential equation becomes an algebraic one. And after factoring out of V sub C, then rearranging, the capacitor voltage we're looking for comes out to 1 over 1 plus J omega RC times the input voltage. And this is just a complex number, which can be rewritten using Euler's formula. So I need to make some room here, but if omega r and c are all, let's say, 1, then the coefficient becomes 1 over 1 plus j, which can be rewritten as 0.5 minus 0.5j, or root 2 over 2 times e to the j times minus 45 degrees. So if the input voltage is something like 3 cosine of t plus 10 degrees, we can replace that with Euler's formula, or put it in phasor form, knowing the actual voltage is the real component. So if we plug that in for the input voltage, then we find the output voltage across the capacitor is this here. But of course, we only care about the real component, which is 3 root 2 over 2, 
cosine of t minus 35 degrees. That's how imaginary numbers help us. Instead of having to solve a differential equation, we can solve an algebraic one with imaginary numbers. Once we have this equation, the only math we have to do is figure out what that complex coefficient is in exponential form. Because that exponential tells us, in this case, to multiply the input voltage amplitude by root 2 over 2 and shift the phase by negative 45 degrees. And when you have a circuit with just resistors, to find the output voltage across R2, you use this equation, a simple voltage divider. When R2 is replaced by a capacitor, we get the equation we saw earlier. But by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 over j omega c, we get this, which, hey, looks very similar to the equation above. Just instead of R2, we have 1 over j omega c, which, remember, is the impedance of the capacitor. So we can treat impedance just like resistance, in that we can add the values when components are in series, we do the reciprocals when they're in parallel, but the only difference is you're going to get complex numbers because there will be a phase shift that happens as well as an amplitude change, which we can find algebraically using Euler's formula. And while this is all useful for sinusoidal inputs, when you have anything else, the math actually still works for the most part, because all functions can be made up of sinusoids. It's beyond this video, but if you apply the Fourier transform to both sides of this equation, or the capacitor slash inductor equations, you get the same impedances and voltage dividers as before. You would just have to do inverse transforms at the end to get an actual solution. And if you want to see more of the real world applications of complex numbers, you can do so on Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is an educational platform home to thousands of lessons in math, science, and engineering, with new lessons being added monthly. And a big focus with Brilliant is real-world applications, as they show you exactly how to apply the formulas and concepts within their lessons. Here you can see some examples from their complex numbers course, which dives much deeper into the power of Euler's formula and what can be done with it. And as with all their courses, you get constant practice problems as well as intuitive visuals that help you understand even the more advanced concepts on a fundamental level. And you can now try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. Just go to brilliant.org slash Zachstar or click the link in the description below. Plus the first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. With that, gonna end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you all in the next video.